everybody, and welcome to the Everything VoiceOver Podcast. My name is Justin D. Torres. The Everything VoiceOver Podcast is brought to you by The Voice Realm, where only professional voice actors are listed. All right, today I'm talking to you from California as opposed to New York City. I came out here for a few uh, days just to <clears throat> take in the Grand Canyon and take in Zion, and I wanted to make sure I got a little podcast out here to you guys for the month of October before old Halloween comes out so that you guys can have a little bit of extra information before you go into the winter months, which can be a little bit dry, uh, especially uh, especially in the winter. You might find that there are less jobs out there. But uh, today on the Everything VoiceOver podcast, we're going to be talking about auditioning strategies. And I'm going to give you 10 audition strategies that you can use uh, on all your auditions that might give you that edge that you need to get, uh, to get the best, uh, to get the best uh, audition that will get, get you the job, hopefully. Now, auditioning can be a very simple process. You know, you do the audition, you pop in the bid, you know, maybe you put a good template out there and then you just ship it off. And and if you're like me, you can get it down to a science where you'll be able to do everything and do like 30 auditions an hour and then suddenly it's shipped off and you're done for the day and then you're just back to doing the jobs that you normally have. And then, uh, and then you know, the auditioning is only a small portion of your day. You're not doing it all the time, but you are spending a good portion of, the, especially the start and the end, you're probably taking care of auditions as much as you can. However, if you start using the old shotgun method, which is what I started out with, every audition goes through, every audition gets done. Um, you may come to a breaking point, which is what I, what is it, which is a true word for it. I, I call it a breaking point, where you'll wonder if there's, you know, if there's a better way to do it. <clears throat> Um, well, when you hit that breaking point, uh, you want to keep all those speedy skills available to you, all the editing and all the, uh, the ways to, uh, uh, you know, keep your, keep your auditioning things efficient and all the little multitasking things you've got set up. You want to keep all those things. Um, but you want to try and take into consider these audition, take into consideration these audition strategies from everything voiceover and see if you can't increase your rate of audition wins, which means more jobs, which means more money. So here are the 10 audition strategies from everythingvoiceover.com on the Everything Voiceover podcast. Number one, make sure you always have a place for the client to go to. Now, this may be a simple thing, but if you're using an email, make sure that you have a link to your website on all outgoing emails. I can't remember if it's like a footnote or something like that, but I've, I've set it up on my email so that every email that I send out has a link to my website down there. And if you don't have a website... You can always send them to a profile that you've made on another site, whether it's Voices.com or Voice Realm or Voice123. They have already created a profile for you, so you might as well go there. Some It has to be someplace that has a demo available to listen to, or even better, if you've made a YouTube video with all your amazing work, you can go ahead and send them there. Now, uh, now uh, you want a link. And now, now, mostly with pay-to-play pay sites, um, they'll they'll have the link already there for your profile, but you know in your tr in your template It's it's a great idea to actually tell them hey You may want to check out my profile if you want to see more demos these might fit your job and tell them to go check it out Number two if you come across a category you're unsure of research it uh, a promo sounds different than a commercial uh, which sounds different than an audiobook uh, take a listen to commercials nowadays. Check out check out your TV and take a listen to a few commercials and compare them to audiobooks. I didn't realize as I first got into this that I I really feel like audiobooks are actually much more conversational than even the most conversational commercial because even the conversational commercials out there don't really seem like that's the way people talk. However, audiobooks are somewhat closer to how people normally talk. And sometimes audiobooks, uh, you know, sometimes audiobooks are much more fun and mythical, and you might have to, you might do a little bit less conversational stuff. But and commercials can be even more conversational. But the the key is to make sure that you are researching what you're doing. Like a video game is very realistic as well, um, and promos are not realistic at all. So make sure you research the type of category that you're unsure of. Uh, and, and how do you figure out if you're unsure of it? Well, if you haven't done any jobs for it, yeah, research. Research the ones you haven't done any jobs. If you're, if you're great on conversational, if you see a promo, just listen to a promo that's popular out there and, and see if you can kind of mimic it in your own voice in your own way. It's not very good to uh, imitate exactly what the other people are doing, but if you do it in your own special way with your voice, 
who knows? You might get it. Number three uh, on audition strategies from everythingvoiceover.com. Bid or audition for jobs which pay what you are willing to take. Now this is a this is a this is an iffy thing, and and most of the time, if you're if you're someone who goes out for jobs, um, especially the oddest thing about in studio jobs, when I first was with my, with my agent, they never told me how much the jobs paid for, so it doesn't really matter. You're just going out for those jobs. However, um, the there when you're doing uh, auditions with agencies that are not sending you out, you may actually see exactly what the pay is, and you want to be able to do the jobs, which you will be happy to do the jobs. Where, where do not bid low and expect the, the pay grade to go higher and higher. I was recently told by a site that I should take the low paying jobs because a percentage of those turn into multi thousand dollar jobs. And I responded to them by saying, don't ever tell that to any voiceover artists ever, ever, ever. This is not an internship. You are dealing with professionals. I mean, if you're, this could be done, don't try and bait us. We already know what the deal is. This is actual work. This is working actual work. So do the auditions for the jobs that you'll be happy with doing. Uh, your willingness will go down as time goes on. Believe me, as you start out, a small job is amazing. You'll get tons of those small jobs and soon you'll get tired of the clients that are asking for like $40 or $20 a page and you, and you have to ask them for more. And if not, no big deal. You'll, you'll grow out of it as your skill grows. Uh, you'll grow out of those clients as your client base grows and, and, and as your studio gets better and better, you will suddenly have a better product that's worth more and there's no reason to keep those clients around. Uh, I have definitely had to say goodbye to multiple clients as, I, as I've grown as a voiceover artist and that's something you have to do. You have to be able to say goodbye eventually. But if you're first starting out, don't do something that's entirely out of, out of, out of the realm of something that you are willing to do. Now, number four, never audition first thing in the morning or la or the last thing at night. Make sure you've got your blood pumping early. Make sure that your energy is up and you're feeling positive and you're ready to go. Now you'll sound. And now the thing is you, you, if you ever answer the phone in the morning, you sound like you're asleep when you wake up or right before you go to bed, you will people can tell what your situation is, especially when it gets close to those early or late hours. And I used to do most auditions late and it would drain all my energy and I'd hate it. And it probably came off in all of my auditions that I did late. So do not do that. And number five, uh, you're going to want to call those uh, ethnicity auditions that you can't do. Sometimes people can fake a really good accent and, and maybe it'll work if you've got an accent that everyone's like, that's exactly Italian, then go for it. But that's sometimes auditions labeled things like uh, must speak Spanish fluently or conversational Italian accent or must must sound like Mike Rowe or urban sounding or North Vietnamese accent or colloquial stuff, even like local Chicago male or Montreal female. Don't waste your time. Toss them to the curb. They want something very specific. If, if you have fun with auditions and you want to do it, then absolutely give it a shot. But if you if you're if you're tired of not getting those not getting those jobs, don't do the auditions. Kick them to the curb. Curb. You don't need them. So that was our first five of the audition strategies we're talking about. Make sure you have a place for the client to go. We're talking about places in your email, like a link to a website or something. Number two, if you come across a category you're unsure of, make sure you research it. Look it up. Look up, uh, look up commercials and promos. Figure out the difference between the two. Try and figure out how your voice fits in those. Number three, bid or audition for jobs which pay what you are willing to take as a voiceover artist. Do not do anything you are not be willing to do as a job. Don't expect higher pay from the same client later. That's not a good idea. Do what you're happy with doing. And as you grow and as all the things uh, and, and as your studio grows, you'll be able to charge more and feel 100% um, you know, worth the amount that you're charging. Number four, never audition first thing in the morning or last thing at night. You're, you will be able to tell that you are not the voiceover artist that you are uh, putting out there. On, on your auditions late in the night or early in the morning. Number five, call, the, call those ethnicity auditions that you are not. We all know what we're not. There's no reason for us to do them, so go ahead and delete those. 
All right, now's a great time to say that Everything VoiceOver Podcast, the Everything VoiceOver Podcast is brought to you by the Voice Realm, where only professional voice actors are listed. Voice Realm is really great pay-to-play site, and if you've got it as a supplemental for Voices.com, I think it really helps, and they've got a lot of good clients there, which is definitely worth uh, putting your money into, and it's definitely cheaper than most of the pay-to-play sites out there. I recommend it. Um, check it out. Check out my review on it. I think I have one on uh, on uh, EverythingVoiceOver.com. Go ahead and check it out there. All right, back to the audition strategies. We are on number six, more than halfway through. And let me check the time here. Ten minutes. We are rocking along really quickly. Awesome. All right, number six. Communicate your rules in your template. Now, uh, when you have a template, it's it's what you send out to clients for all your auditions. And you want to really communicate your rules. A couple examples of rules that I give my clients is rules like I only give two rounds of pickups. Any any pickups, any pickups requested after th- after those rounds will be charged a fee. Um, any pickups requested after three months of the last official uh, job being done uh, will be charged a fee as well. So they can't just hold on to pickups for three months. They have to be, they have to be within three months is more than uh, adequate to give to clients. Don't, it's not crazy to ask for that. I also say that minor rewrites can be considered pickups. Now I say minor because that's the big word here. Minor, minor. You cannot do the entire job over again and rewrite the entire job over again. That is not a rewrite. That is a major rewrite and that means an entirely different job and i also give them my turnaround time if you can do it within six hours don't just say i can do it within six hours say that you can do it within six hours within receipt of the job and confirmed response just because they gave you the job at 6 p.m you need to know you've gotten the job and received it and been able to do it so within six hours of you receiving it you should be able to do the job now number seven uh, in, in, uh, similar to the communicate your rules in your template, read the rules in their template. Make sure you read it thoroughly. One thing that trumps your audition template, and this is true, it trumps your audition template is their audition script. If they say it needs to be done by 8 p.m. Eastern, you better be able to do it by 8, 8 p.m. Eastern. By auditioning, you are agreeing to the terms that they put forth. And then by uh, them accepting your job, they are agreeing to the terms that you put forth. But their terms are the ones that are first there, so you need to make sure that you're going to agree to those beforehand. Especially, even if they're like, yo, we're going to need uh, pickups after four months. Well, you're agreeing to that. And if you're agreeing to that, unfortunately, they have the the, the say there. So, uh, so you have to be able to do that. You are agreeing with the initial rules by uh, by auditioning for the job. And now something that goes uh, directly uh, with that is if they require like a phone in or a source connect, or maybe they use Skype and those things like that, make sure you know how to do that. It's extremely important. You don't want to have a technical difficulty when they call in or they're like, uh, we, or if especially source connect and things that are costly, you need to make sure you have those available uh, for that client. And also a, g- a good thing to know is that you know, uh, Source Connect and those uh, I- ISD, and they cost money. So make sure that if you're auditioning and they're requiring Source Connect, make sure that they're paying a, a high price for it. There, there can't be hundred dollar jobs on Source Connect. It's just n- unheard of. So make sure you're making a, a decent wage uh, if you're if you actually have put in money to to have those upper upper uh, line type of things for voiceover. All right, we're on eight. Go through the audition once and edit later, or only do two to three attempts at a perfect read. Perfect reads meaning that you just go through it straight from the slate to the end, all the way through, perfect. Perfect reads are almost impossible to do. And also, if you do do a perfect read and it's a 30-second spot and you've given them a 30-second spot straight away, uh, that's also giving them the whole job, which could be a problem. I like to always keep a little bit of that audition you know, back so that they don't use it. <coughs> excuse me there for a second 
Um, for in-person auditions, you know, the few times that uh, I've been able to do that as a, when I was represented, uh, the, the 20 to 30 second reads are usually given two to three shots at it in general. So yeah, it's not really a perfectionist type of thing when you get in studio and it shouldn't be a perfectionist type of thing when you're doing it at home. Longer than that, I'd say there's no need for perfection. I say go through the audition and edit it later and trust that you've got the tone that, that you need, got, you know, that you've got the right tone throughout. Now, uh, another big th thing about doing more attempts is make sure that you allow inspiration to get you to change and redo it. Inspiration is the key. If you if you think, oh man, there's a cool way I can say it this way, then uh, then that's great. Go ahead and do a redo. You're inspired. You figured out... Maybe it wouldn't be sounding like that, you know, and I wouldn't do a redo of someone if you're, if you're, if it's through negative, through a negative by telling yourself, oh, that sucked. I got to do it again because chances are you're going to be doing changes just because you think it sucked. Try and be inspired by your changes to do it again. Be like, instead of saying that sucked, let's do it again. Just think about it like, oh, what would I like to do a little bit differently that might feel better? Try those. And we got up to nine here, nine here. Use your slate to give you momentum in your read. Now, this is a, an actual article that I wrote on everythingvoiceover.com, and I think it's very important that your slate be conversational and, and be, uh, hey, it's Justin D. Torres. Um, you know, just having fun. I like to say, hey, or hello, or what, you know, if you want, if you're, a, if you're like a cool sounding guy, you might say, what's up? I'm Justin D. Torres. It just gives you a more conversational feel from the get-go, and that kind of feels good for a client as opposed to someone saying, Justin D. Torres, hey, you want to go to Costco? You know, it just doesn't seem like it's real. Um, you don't want to have a very huge differentiation between the style of your slate and the style of your read itself. You want it to be very conversational, and when I say momentum, it's so much easier to use how you say something uh, the momentum of how you say something to push the rest of the way you say something. So like if I was doing a, a, a commercial for open office and uh, open office, it's the greatest thing uh, for your PC. That's what it is, right? So if I, I'm going to do my slate differently and see how it changes the rest of my, uh, the rest of my uh, audition. Um, here we go. Hey, it's Justin e. Torres. Open Office, the best thing for your PC. Hey, it's Justin D. Torres. Open Office, the, f the best thing for your PC. Um, hey, it's Justin D. Torres. Open Office, the best thing for your PC. So if you think about it, the way I'm saying the slate puts momentum in the, into the rest of the read. And I've got three really different reads with a mess up in the middle there. I know that. Um, but I've got three different reads and, you know, they all sound a little bit different and a little bit cool and, you know, figure out which one you like best and use your slate to work it. You know, when people say conversation, say conversational, you know, say something like, hey, it's Justin D. Torres. If people are doing enthusiastic, you might be like, hey, it's Justin D. Torres. Open office, the best thing for your PC. So, you know, you never know how you, if you use your slate, it might be the best thing for your auditions. Number 10. Use your body. And this is an actual other podcast that I did earlier. And a couple of uh, um, articles on everythingvoiceover.com do this. And I wanted to make sure that people were able to do this in the 10 audition strategies. All the other strategies are very different than what I've been telling you. But I really wanted to bring this back. Use your body to bring, bring your energy out. So right now, I'm not using my body. So this is how I sound basically using my entire voice to try and be enthusiastic. Now, if I start using my uh, body a little bit more, um, you can hear that I'm trying to think about what I'm trying to say, and then maybe you can feel a little bit more uh, enthusiastic about it, or maybe I'm trying to think about, here's, here's me trying to be, uh, trying to figure out what I'm gonna say. Can you, can, you, can you hear it? My body is basically telling me that I'm supposed to, you know, pinch my fingers together and think about, Mm, this is what I'm supposed to say. Um, if I was trying to convince people and it was, it was huge energy, I may be like, hey, 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 I'm putting my arms out. Hey, hey, uh, you know, open office, the best thing for your PC. You know, your body brings your energy out. I always tell people to stand up for their auditions because I think naturally it's standing up. Right now I'm sitting down. I'm sitting down uh, when I'm doing the podcast. But if I was standing up, it'd be an entirely different thing. So, 
make sure that you use your body to bring out all the energy, whether it's shrugging or using your arms or using your, your body or maybe moving back and forth, you know? Who knows? Uh, use your body. It's there for you. Use it. You're not just a voice. It's all connected. Okay. All right, this has been 10 audition strategies for everythingvoiceover.com for the Everything VoiceOver podcast. Let's go through the last four one more time. Number six, communicate your rules in your template. Give all your rules. How many pickup rounds? How, how long do they have to give you the pickups? All the turnaround time, everything like that. Uh, read, read their rules thoroughly. This is huge. Make sure if they say it needs to be done by 8 p.m., it needs to be done by 8 p.m. Know that you have to do that by 8 p.m. before you audition. Uh, number eight, go through your auditions once and edit later, or just attempt it two to three times. And also, give allow inspiration to, to make you do more of the audition. That's huge. Inspiration will get you to do better auditions. I promise you that. And number nine, use your slate to give, your, give you momentum in your read. You Hey, how's it going? Conversational energy, use your slate. And number ten, use your body to bring your energy out. That means... That means use your hands, uh, put, them, put them out to the sky, and then it'll sound a little bit different. Or if you put them in a little, you know, I might I sound like this when I've got everything scrunched in. This is who knows what this could be. It could be a mouse, you know? All right. That has been the crazy 10 <laughs> audition strategies for uh, the Everything VoiceOver podcast. The Everything VoiceOver podcast is brought to you by The Voice Realm, where only professional voice actors are listed. Thank you guys so much for listening in. Uh, I'm going to be heading back to New York City tomorrow, so so you'll be able to hear all the, the lovely <laughs> theme songs that I have there. Unfortunately, I was doing a Bare Bones podcast out here, but I'll be able to add in the music for the later podcasts in November. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, my name is Justin D. Torres. This has been the Everything VoiceOver Podcast and the 10 Audition Strategies uh, for all you voiceover players out there. Have a great night.